Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program again and this is the something -th episode of mods and stuff. In this one we're going to take up another lander there, which is going to act as a heavy miner and also a converter as well. Um, the you know little drills that we had before, okay, they could drill the keythane and stuff, but they weren't really that powerful. And now we've got four of the really heavy drills to use, so that'll be a lot better. Anyway, um, as we launch up and sort of get over to the moon, I'm going to talk about something a bit different, which you may or may not know about. There's been all this stuff about uh, Google screwing around with the way that YouTube monetization works, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about what's happened, but basically they've changed the way the claiming process works, and a lot of companies, um, you know, com fraudulent companies basically, have managed to also exploit it. Um, and get people banned for stuff that they shouldn't be banned for. You know, claim that content that was in people's videos was theirs, even though it wasn't. Um, I should be okay for that, I think, because I'm only playing Kerbal Space Program and using my voice, which, you know, technically, n none of it can be owned by anyone else apart from Squad, who are quite happy to let everyone else, you know, it's not like I'm using any royalty-free music or anything, so that's all good. Um, so, you know, I think I'll be okay on that front. I don't think anything bad will happen, fingers crossed. Uh, but the, what the one problem that could happen is that uh, the, the thing that they've changed is that if you're with a network now, such as, um, you know, people, you'll, heard, you'll have heard of people being with Machinima, or yeah, I think it's Polaris is one of the big ones that PewDiePie and that's with. Um, you know, that, that, that kind of group, I think I'm with Zoom in TV. Zoom in TV, I think that's it who are quite an easy one to get into and seem to have decent numbers and things. So that's who I went with, because obviously I'm not uh, that big a YouTuber, so I can't get into any of the really big companies. But uh, yeah, the, those companies now have been, the, the sort of responsibilities have been changed with claims and things and how bad things can happen. So now the responsibility has been put with the partner, I think, sorry, been put with the network rather than with Google. Google's basically said, nah, nah, we're not covering you for that if anything bad happens. Which means that um, there's been a lot of fuss, and basically the, the end thing is that most YouTubers, unless you're a really high, you know, really, really big YouTuber, like I think even Nerd Cubed hasn't, if you've heard of him, he's got one and a half million subscribers, pretty much. He hasn't actually been able to get the type of partnership, which means that he... Um, can upload videos without a sort of three-day delay before he can monetize them, which is kind of stupid because that obviously means that I'm not going to be able to do that. I don't think. Um, I'm not sure yet. This will be the first video uploaded since it happens. But basically, what was happening was, you can put up a video, monetize it, and you have to wait three days for everything, or it could be up to three days for everything to be approved and the video ready to be made, listed instead of unlisted. Or you could just make it so everyone can see it, but you can't make any money off it until it's been approved. It's kind of stupid. I, I'm not completely sure how it works, because I've not actually had any experience with it. Um, everything I've heard about it's just for, been from other people, and that's, some of that's been from other people telling them. So, you know, it's not great. Um, and the Google's lack of documentation is somewhat disappointing as well. Anyway, um, as you may be able to tell from my voice, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so sorry for any... Um, you know, not niceness in my voice. <laughs> I've had a cold for maybe three days, four, well, I've had a cold for about a week now, but it's just progressively gotten worse, and now it's kind of difficult to speak even. Um, so yeah, that that's happening, but I decided to try and do the commentary, at least get something done over the weekend so that you guys have something to watch. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm not completely sure what's happening with that whole monetization thing. I'll tell you sometime soon when I've uploaded this and make another video because by then I'll know what the deal is with that, how it'll affect you guys directly. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get back to Kerbal. So at the moment, <clears throat> we are, we've just made a transfer burn and as I said, this thing is like going to be a heavy lander. So this has, as I said, four drills and a heavy converter unit which means that um, we'll be able to make use of all that power that we've got from that big solar array because before that wasn't really being used because we only had a couple of little drills. Now we've got four massive drills, so we'll be able to use those, that's good. Um, so now we're just coming in for the landing. I'm trying to adjust my orbit so that it gets sort of in line with, with where we want to be. 
And there we go, we've run out of fuel in our transfer stage. And actually, you know, we're a bit close on fuel this time. I think I've sort of become a king of not quite having enough Delta V, but make, making it anyway. I kind of like that, that's kind of cool. Um, you know, if it's something I'm going to get well known for, because it happens all the time, where I just don't quite have enough Delta V in my lander to eat, make it and make it back. Or, you know, actually land successfully, like what happened with that big solar array. If you remember that. You know, I'm, I'm sort of... It's a bad habit, I'll say. Anyway, we'll just wait until we get down to that periapsis and then burning retrograde, bringing our orbit so that we land somewhere near the rest of the base and we'll adjust it when we get a bit closer. Um, so yeah, everything's looking pretty good. And there we are, that's the orbit circularized. And we still, you know, this, we do have plenty of fuel really, but uh, you, have, you have to be quite efficient in the way you do this to have enough fuel left over. So now I'm having to pull my orbit slightly north to bring my, you know, so I'll actually land in line with the rest of the base. Anyway, there we are, that's happening. And there's a little bit of a cut here because um, the recording sort of had a bit of a glitch and things and it just did, didn't look nice. So there we go, we get a bit closer now. And now we're just coming in to land. So there we are, yep. Full throttle now and trying to slow ourselves down as much as we can. We don't want to slow ourselves down too much because then we'll hit, um, well, then we'll land too short. And if we slow ourselves down not enough, then we'll hit the ground. So you know, there's a bit of a balance to be made there. Anyway, that's us um, pretty much coming down now. Yep, we're pretty much there. And um, just the final sort of, just trying to get as close as I can basically. Um, and you can see we are quite low on fuel. Well, very low on fuel. You know, less than 50 fuel left. Uh, about 30 fuel, I think it is there. And then I burn a little bit more. And I make a little hop as well, because I want to get a bit closer. Anyway, there we go. It looks like we've um, we've landed successfully. So now I'm not going to show you all this, because it took ages and it was painful. And yes, it did involve a couple of quick saves and quick loads. But basically we moved the uh, big solar array next to this because this is going to be where our base is now. We're going to get rid of all the other stuff at some point. Uh, but basically we just attach the little um, you know, fuel port and link up the ships. And then uh, we get, you know, we get to use this base. But it doesn't quite yet work yet because we don't actually have any keythane storage. And that's what we're going to work on in the next episode. We're going to get some fuel and keythane storage brought over there so that we can, um, you know, take some, actually get Keythane, because when we mine it, it's not actually working, because there's nowhere for the Keythane to go. It can't go anywhere to then be converted, which means it's not working. Which means that we have to have somewhere to store it. So the next episode will be bringing a couple of storage tanks over, and um, also some liquid fuel tanks, so that we have somewhere to refuel from, because then... We're going to make something which can go all the way to the moon and back, all the way to this base and back, and transport some kerbals, which should be fun. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to try and make it something that's reasonably um, efficient in the sense that, you know, it works in a similar way to the space shuttle where it uh, launches. Doesn't, you know, nothing gets blown up. It's all completely reusable. So I'm going to try and do that. But anyway, there we are. We are pretty much done. And uh, yeah, everything's everything's good. So, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day.